Ezekiel chapter 31. And it came to pass in the eleventh year of Nebuchadnezzar, the third month, and the first day of the month. Hey, look, here's a date. God wanted to know that date. That the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, familiar term of, of Ezekiel, Daniel, and Jesus Christ. Speak unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. We're not letting up on, on Egypt. Another chapter about Pharaoh in Egypt. And to his multitude, people in Egypt, whom art thou like unto thy greatness? All right, so who do you like? What can I compare you to? Well, behold the Assyrian. Both the Assyrian and Pharaoh are types of the Antichrist. The only thing Nebuchadnezzar gets right, I believe Nebuchadnezzar repented enough that you can't tell in the Old Testament, especially being a Gentile, he may be in heaven. But you don't have that assurity in the Old Testament. Assyria never got right. Was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Now, in the Bible, many times does God liken men to trees. There was a blind man that Jesus anointed and anointed his eyes. He says, I see men as trees. And there are a lot of parables in typology where men are likened to the trees. In the trees, they have family trees. They have cells. They're living. They die. They come back to life. There's all different kinds of trees. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I never read this one. I, I don't know if any two trees are alike. They have age, wing, age rings. <laughs> There's families of trees. And with a shadowing shroud. I mean, it, it's overflowing and... and it's it's a big, firm, filled out tree of a high stature. It's it's a very tall tree, and its top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great, and you see in chapter Psalms chapter one, there's a good tree and there's the evil tree. The children of God and the children of Satan. The waters made him great, and every water makes trees good. Man needs water. Trees take the carbon dioxide and give us air to breathe. And you're going to find a tree that's healthier by a, a water source. And one of the places in the desert, do you know if, if there's water up ahead, is you'll see plants and maybe a, a, a palm tree. And the deep set him up on high with her rivers round about his plants. And set him out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted. Pay attention to the words now and liken to Satan that we've already read and studied. Above all the trees of the field. Exalted means to be lifted up. And his boughs were multiplied. And his branches became long because of the multitude of waters. And he shot forth. You know, you read in Mystery Babylon in Revelation. It says she's surrounded by many waters. And then when John's given the, the, the illustration show. That many waters are many people, tongues, and nations. Many people, it's not a literal tree, many people give the Assyrian, many people give Pharaoh, many people are going to give the Antichrist life and, and strong, strength. When he shot forth. And the falls of heaven. Now Mark chapter 4, the sower that sowed the seed and the birds came and ate, ate the seed. And Jesus tells us what the parable meant. He says, that's the devil. That's the wicked one. That's devils. Unclean birds shall be in, in Babylon. It pictures devils. 
And Jesus said there was a tree that grown up great and had the fowls. Of the, that's the devils. The kingdom of heaven. Hey, here's this great healthy tree. But you know what? There's unclean beings. There's unclean devils. There's unclean people. You'll have no birds in heaven. And think about the most, one of the unclean birds that there is. And you, and you look at the natural uh, symbols of, of, of uh, Germany and America is the, is the bald eagle. That's an unclean animal. And under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring their young. Under his shadow dwell among all great nations. Now it doesn't say what kind of beast. There's unclean beasts and there are clean beasts. <laughs> So you got devils and you got clean people, and you got unclean people, all under this, this government of this Syria and the government of Babylon. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God. Now, we're not going literal in the garden of God. But we're going to look at some trees that were in the garden of God. Where were we in the garden of God a couple of chapters ago? We were there with the, with the great dragon, the serpent, the old serpent, the devil. Remember that? Dealing with Tyre? How Tyre matched the Babylon? The cedars of the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs. The chestnut trees were not like his branches. So we're seeing trees that were in the garden of God, all kinds of trees. Chestnut. Uh, Adam and Eve were given to nuts and vegetables and fruits. Nor any the tree of the garden was like unto him. Now look at that statement. In his beauty. Remember we just read a couple chapters ago about Satan? Remember the little, little study we did about beauty? So we're going far beyond Pharaoh. But we're also talking about Pharaoh. But we're also looking to Satan. Lucifer. And the devil. I mean, all these pictures they have of the devil and Satan, I think he's too more attracted than what they draw him as. Because how can you say that, Stiley? Because look at even Christians fall to the devil. And what he presents to him is attractive. I mean, Christmas is a pagan holiday, but look at all the pretty lights. Look at all the pretty presents. Look at the pretty tree. Look at the pretty stockings. Look at the pretty Christmas card. Look at all the pretty and beautiness of Christmas. And then they say, well, you know, it's the birthday of Jesus. That's the last thing on your mind. Well, no, no. Okay, how many people did you tell today the gospel of Jesus Christ amongst your unsaved family? When you sat down with, with your family today, and they weren't going to say the blessing, they were just going to start eating. Did you say, wait a minute, i, I, I got to say a blessing before we, before we eat. Many of you wouldn't because you wouldn't be back for the Easter meal. When you were down on your knees grabbing presents and hands, did you thank Jesus Christ? Was he on your mind? I trod not for many worldly Christians. What are you going to do in January when you open up your envelopes and find out how the bills come in for your credit cards for all the junk you brought? Are you going to be mad tomorrow that the stores are going to have long lines to return the junk and the broken things you bought and got? Or are you going to be thanking God? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. i got to spend an hour and a half in a line. Huh? You didn't give God any Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving because you were hurried to get done so you can go to Black Friday. And you'd be the last one to read your Bible. I had made him fair by the multitude of his branches and so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. That's a sin. 
envy is a sin. Now, I guarantee this is not the literal trees in, in the garden. You know, look up. But let me ask you something. In the Garden of Eden, the true fact is there were many trees in the Garden of Eden. Right? What tree did the human beings have their eye on of all the trees in the Garden? Wouldn't you think if the apple tree said, hey, why are you going there, man? I got some sweet, delicious, all different varieties of apples here in our orchard. The pecan tree say, hey, listen, I got some delicious nuts. The potassium tree say, hey, you can't just have one of me. If you're going to sit down and have one of my nuts, you're going to sit down and have a, you're going to have a whole tree of nuts. Pears, peaches, oranges, raspberries and strawberries and you just name. But they had their eye, the Bible said, it didn't say they had an orange, it didn't say they had an apple, it didn't say they had a banana, it didn't say, it said they had the eyes on the tree of the knowledge good and evil. And the other tree, why not us? Now, I think, I don't believe, but I think, and I'm not sure, but I think that tree of the knowledge of good and evil is planted by the devil. And all the other trees were, were created by God, but one tree done by the devil, and look what man went. You got all the world of celebrations in our calendar. And you can't look to the Jewish celebrate. Now listen, we don't follow the Jewish law, but we can look to the Passover. Je Paul said Jesus Christ, our Passover. And that's when Jesus Christ died. All right, we don't go make booths or anything like that, but we can look to the Feast of, of Tabernacle and possibly be the birthday of Jesus. And we, we don't look to, you know, the, the Feast of Purim, but we can look to the Feast of Purim and, and celebrate how God gave his people victory over the devil. Why doesn't the church celebrate the Jewish holidays, and not celebrate them to what the law says, but take this, all right, this week, you know, it, it's uh, Pentecost. Let's take this week, and let's, in our Bible studies, and in our preaching, let's have the Christians understand Pentecost, because Pentecost is when the church began. And if you were to ask any one out of ten Baptists coming out of a Baptist church on a Sunday morning and say, what is Pentecost? They would, I oh, don't know. But what's Easter? Eggs, new dresses, new hats, baskets. What's Christmas? Cards, gifts, tree. And you don't know about Pentecost? What about the Day of Atonement? The okay, Day of Atonement comes up on our calendar. Why can't we take a church time that week and learn about what the Day of Atonement is? Because we have the ultimate Day of Atonement once. Did our high priest enter into the veil, rip that veil, went to the holy place, deposited the blood once and for all? Envy is a sin. You know what happens on Christmas? Well, I didn't get the toy that he got. Well, he got a better shirt than I got. He got more money in his car than I got. Mine's broken. You forgot to buy the batteries. You know what the Jewish holidays lacked for you to be envy? People are saying, thank God today's the last day of Christmas. Yep, now we do. Let's start. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up, that sound familiar? That's Satan. That's your politicians, that's your kings and queens, that's your history of your great military. Who is it? Take any person in history, and they, they got their name and the great. Alexander the Great. Peter the Great. That's exalting yourself. 
We have a great pastor. <laughs> Got it? Sometimes the great becomes before the names or title. And he has shot up his top among the top balls. Look, how, look at me. I'm the, and his heart is lifted up, pride, proud, up in his height. That's all Satan. That's all Pharaoh. Pharaoh's like, I am the God King. I am not only a leader, I am God. I made the Nile River. Was we read before? And when you start taking the credit for God, the creator, you're in trouble. I read the, I, I heard, I read the other day, Santa Claus is going to give us a white Christmas. Oh, you better watch out what you say. You better get rid of Mother Nature. Because God don't like that. God's a jealous God. Therefore, I have therefore delivered him unto the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. That would be Nebuchadnezzar. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. You know what God does for wickedness? If you don't repent, he's going to drive you out. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet will end up in the lake of fire that burns forever. And the fallen angels. And all those that have not repented and put their faith and trust in Jesus. And strangers. That's weird because you see the heathen in 11? There's either heathen G Gentiles or there's Jewish Hebrew. Who are the strangers? The terrible of the nations. Plural. Have cut him off and have left him upon a mountain in all the valleys his branches have fallen. Remember we talked about we talked about the devil and he's gonna be driven out to the wilderness as a as a sea bearing animal and he's just gonna rot out in the wilderness? Well here's the mountains. It's the same thing. And his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land. And the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. You know, your friends who you think your friends are not really your friends. I had many Christians, oh, stand by you, we'll be with you. And they're gone. There are very few that still praying for me today. I've known from years and years and years ago. But most likely the person that is your friend today when it comes to the stick and thin and all the troubles and problems that will happen, very few will be with you through it. Few will be with you. Upon his ruin shall all the fathers of the heaven remain. <laughs> so his friends go, but the devil stay. And all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. That means his branches are on the ground. That's not where tree branches belong. That means there's been death. There's been disease. To the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their pipe. So what has happened to Pharaoh is to teach the other nation. Oh, I, I better keep humble. And it's true that though America has not got it and the world has not got it, punishment does deter sin and crime for a time, but it does. Well, you know, well, you know, if you execute a murderer, well, what's that going to be? Well, that murderer won't won't kill anybody else, <laughs> guaranteed. You got right now, we are letting people out of the correctional system and they're going out and doing the crimes that put them in the correctional system. That didn't work. Neither their trees stand up in their height. All that drink water. For they are all delivered unto death. To the neither parts of the earth, get that, neither parts of the earth. 
in the midst of children of men with them that go down to the pit. You know, get near the parts of the earth, get going down to the pit, and remember the story of Jonah. And thus say the Lord in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him. I restrained the floods thereof, and the great waters were stayed. I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees in the field fainted for him. I made nations to shake at the sound of his fall. You remember all this with Satan? Remember all this? But it's also Pharaoh. When I cast him down to H-E-L-L, -L, in either parts of the earth, to the pit, death, grave, hell. That's what happened to Jonah. And many scholars and pastors and teachers and Christians don't believe that Jonah went to hell. And there's whole religions like the Jehovah Witnesses, all is well, there is no hell. Well, wait till you fall into it. And then that descended into the pit. The pit is hell, and hell is the pit. All the trees of Eden. Now, when you go into hell, the trees of Eden are not going to be in hell. <laughs> the people. Likened to trees. The choice and the best of Lebanon. I mean, the ones that were well known in the earth are the ones probably who went to Broadway to destruction. All that drink water. <laughs> That's interesting, because man drinks water. Man that don't drink water, you're going to dehydrate. Shall be comforted in the neither parts of the earth. Hell. They also went down to hell. With them, uh, unto them that be slain with the sword. So when Nebuchadnezzar comes into Egypt, as he's killing Egyptians and people in Egypt, they're dying and going to hell. And their big tree, their big exalted tree, Pharaoh, is going to die. And he's going to end up in hell with them. They're like, oh, okay. It's interesting. Because what if Adolf Hitler did get saved before he died? I don't know. I'm just saying. What, what if that? Can you imagine all the Nazis that went to hell and then realizing that their leader, if he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, died and went to be absent from the body and present with the Lord? That would upset them quite upsettingly. Well, who doesn't belong to be in hell with us but the guy who... Yeah, there are going to be people in hell when they look at the Christian. You don't deserve... I mean, I'm the one that gave alms. I'm the one that went to church all the time. I was the good person. I did this. I did that. I did this. And I did that. I done that. I done this. And the books were open. They were judged by their works. And they were not found equal to the finished work of Jesus Christ. Well, how on dare does my relative get to go be with Jesus? All he did was believe on Jesus. Look at what I done. I went to church twice a year and I gave money. It would be comforting for all the Catholics who are lost when their popes end up in hell with them. It will be comforting for all the souls that go into the lake of fire. That, oh, okay, there's Satan. Good, you deserve to be here with us. And yet, in the realm today, before eternity begins, there are souls in hell today. Go tell my family not to come.
And they that were his arm, that would be army, his strength. But those that you arm, run that reference back to Antichrist. That dwell under the shadow of his mist of his, dwell under his shadow in the mist of the heathen. Run that to the Antichrist. What is the shadow of the Antichrist? The 666. You want to eat? Take my mark. You want to have a house? Take my mark. You want emergency care, medical care, and, and insulin? Take my mark. The only thing the Antichrist ain't going to do is he's, he's not going to he's not going to stop your taxes. The Bible says he's going to have more. They also went down into hell. I won't tell you what the modern Bible say. They also went down into hell, down into hell. If you read the story of Jonah, how Jonah went down in. And Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be, so shall Jesus be. And they say, well, you know, Jonah didn't go to hell, then Jesus didn't go to hell. He had to go to hell to deposit my sins, and he had to walk across that, that gulf into Abraham's bosom and say, Hey, I'm looking for all the all the lost, all the saved souls out of the Old Testament and the dying thief on the cross. They also went down into hell with him unto them that were slain with the sword. Can you imagine dying in battle? And waking up in hell. Can you imagine dying in, in a fire, car fire, house fire, industrial fire, and then waking up in hell? They that was armed that dwelt under the shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory, and the greatness among the trees of Eden? Who are you now? You know the Pharaoh of Joseph and the Pharaoh of Exodus are not even talked about in the history books in America. The good Pharaoh and the bad Pharaoh. But all the, you know, King Tuck and all the other ones. Yet shall thou be brought down with the trees of Eden and the neither parts of the earth. Tells you where hell is. It's under your feet. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised Gentiles with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh. It's not literal trees. And all his multitude, saith the Lord God. The Pharaoh in this time of Jeremiah and Ezekiel today is in hell, the Bible says. 